Next up in fuels and heats of reaction, we're going to be looking at the heat of combustion. We're going to talk about combusting hydrocarbons, the use of what we know to be a bomb calorimeter. We are going to talk about the heats of combustions of different fuels. We're going to define kilogram calorific value and then recall the use of this kilogram calorific value. Now, the heat of reaction is generally used for any type of reaction, whereas the heat of combustion is a little bit different. The heat of combustion is the heat change when one mole of the substance is completely burned in excess oxygen. This is very important to be aware of the difference between heat of combustion, where we're only talking about one mole, and the heat of a reaction, where we're talking about several numbers of moles in a balanced equation. Completely burned in excess oxygen. Why is that important? Well, it's important for many different reasons. For example, in some elements, they have more than one oxide. What does that mean? There could be carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. So there's two forms of carbon oxides there. So if we look at equation one, we are forming carbon monoxide. And notice the delta H is negative, um, 111 kilojoule per mole. And if we remember a negative value of delta H says we have an exothermic reaction. Heat is provided or given out. Equation number two is the formation of carbon dioxide. Now look at the delta H on this. It's negative 394 again. Heat is liberated, it's an exothermic reaction, but there's so much more energy in the formation of carbon dioxide than there is carbon monoxide. The one mole, that is really important again. Why? If we look at this equation, burning of butane in excess oxygen. You see here in the equation number one at the top, we have two moles of C4H10, which is butane, and 13 moles of O2. That reaction gives us a delta H of negative 5,754 kilojoules per mole. Whilst the following reaction we're going to talk about is for one mole. In this case, we're looking at the heat of combustion for two moles. So you'd assume that the heat combustion for one mole is half of that, okay? Let's do the maths there. So if you found the heat of combustion uh, for two moles of butane, we can just half that or half the whole equation and that will get us one mole of butane. Now, combustion of hydrocarbons is really interesting. Hydrocarbons, as you know, react with oxygen to form carbon dioxide, water and heat. Remember, when we take our fuels, our coal, our gas, um, even turf, if we react that with oxygen, we result in forming carbon dioxide, water, vapour. So that would be a little H2OG down the bottom to state that it's the gas estate and heat energy. So look at the example here. We've got the combustion of methane. As you can see, there is one methane for um, every two oxygens. So it's one mole of CH4 to two moles of O2. The combustion of butane. Again, one mole of butane to 6.5 moles of oxygen. Look at the difference there, guys. The energy output for Methane versus butane is very different. How do we determine that? Well, what we do is we use something called a bomb calorimeter. If you can have a look here, there's a breakdown on this photograph of what we can see as to be a bomb calorimeter. This is used to accurately measure heats of combustion. So we have the bomb calorimeter, we have what we call in inverted commas the bomb, the crucible, and we would need a stirrer. How does this work? Well, very simply, 
First thing you do is you find the mass of your substance. Use a mass balance. We would fill the bomb or the cylinder part with excess O2 under high pressure. So the oxygen in excess is to make sure that the substance completely combusts or is completely burnt in the oxygen. Place the bomb in a known quantity of water. Water is measured and pouring into the calorimeter. The substance is ignited electrically using um, an ignition wire. Temperature rises, we measure it. And then from that, you can calculate the heat produced using a simple equation. The equation is heat produced is equal to mass times specific heat capacity. We'll talk about that. And the rise in temperature times the rise in temperature. So as you can see here, the formula heat produced is mass times specific heat capacity times rise in temperature. It's a better look at it there when it's all set up. So as you can see down the bottom right hand side, you have a little crucible. In this crucible, you would have your sample of a known mass. Very important to make sure the mass is known. The electrical wire there, which is used to ignite the sample. This little apparatus here is actually sealed. So it's very important that you know that there's oxygen in it under pressure and the calorimeter is then surrounded by water. The stirrer is very important. It ensures that the energy or is spread out evenly. The water is homogeneous. It's constant agitation of the water to ensure that the, the heat is distributedly even throughout the water. And your thermometer there to measure the temperature. Now, just going through it there, what we can see is the various heats of combustion um, of different samples. Methane is negative 890 and hydrogen negative 286. It's just important to be aware of some of the different heat of combustions of various fuels. Now the kilogram calorific value. I like this. This is very clever. It's the heat energy produced when one kilo of the fuel is burned completely in oxygen. For example, guys, think about this. Um, in some industry, what we can see is chemists measured the heat given out by fuel, or in some cases, food um, of the mass. So if you ever look on the back of your packet of cornflakes or your crisps or whatever, you'll actually find the kilo joule of energy given beside it. Now, obviously, as most of us are aware of our health and our nutrition, you look at those calorific or those high calorie um, snacks, but just have a look at the kilo joule um, measurement in some of the food that you eat. So if you actually look in kilo joules per kg, the kilogram calorific value. So if we talk about the fact that it's actually methane, we've one kg of it, and this is the kilogram calorific value. So it's very interesting to see the difference between them all. So what is the point of the kilogram calorific value? Well, you gotta measure your efficiency of various fuels. And that is really it with that, guys. So we've defined heat combustion, we've talked about the combustion of different hydrocarbons and the fact that we use excess oxygen, very important in our bomb calorimeter to ensure that the whole of the product reacts. We talked about the heat of combustion of different fuels. We've talked about kilogram calorific value and where they're used. It's really important guys that you are aware that kilogram calorific values can be calculated from heats of combustion. Um, that have a definite chemical formula. So for example, methane and butane. It's very interesting. Have a little look around, guys. You might learn a little bit more about the fuels we use. Um, so methane as a fuel, we know that it burns with a clean flame. It's easy distributely distributed to homes, etc. Um, and it has a very high kilogram calorific value. So just again being aware of different things now 
you could obviously look at substances that are not pure. So they have a variable composition. So petrol, coal, peat. And because these are not pure, the values of these will not be listed. The reason why is they can vary due to the quality and the composition of the fuel and where you obtain it from. 